really happy to be able to start with Ellen Sundström from the uh, Swedish uh, Food Agency and also representing the European Public Health Nutrition Alliance here, which is a, a network of European nutrition centers. So Ellen, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Nikolai, and thank you for the possibility of presenting here today. And as you heard, uh, I'm working at the Swedish Food Agency and I'm here presenting on behalf of the European Public Health Nutrition Alliance today. And uh, the EFNA uh, is a network of 17 organizations throughout Europe, uh, organizations and agencies working with nutrition, uh, of which Sweden is uh, one of them. Uh, and the network provides information on nutrition for a healthy and active life. And it also provides a setting for sharing learnings and challenges, uh, challenges uh, between these organizations and agencies. Uh, and uh, for a couple of years ago, there was a working group uh, was established on healthy school meals. Uh, and one of the results from the work of this working group uh, was an overview of good practices regarding healthy school meals. And this list list has just recently been updated. So if you're curious about initiatives taking, taken around Europe, uh, you can find a list with links and further reading on EFNA's webpage. And I think Nikolai will also provide a link uh, to this document in the chat during this, uh, this ses session. And today I will uh, give you um, a short presentation of an ongoing project in Sweden. And it's a project, project called A New Recipe for School Meals. So the next slide, please. This is a project uh, which is co coordinated by the Swedish Food Agency and funded by the Swedish Innovation Agency called Vinova. Uh, and it is a collaborative project where we work together with other agencies and the mun municipalities with the aim to design and implement a more sustainable school meal system in Sweden. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, in this project, uh, we are trying out the method called mission-oriented innovation. And uh, as you know, we only have a handful of years to achieve the sustainable development goals. Uh, but it is clear that we are um, still uh, a long way off achieving the goals. And you know that food production and consumption are crucial uh, to achieving uh, these goals. So we really need to change the system so that we can produce, buy and eat food that is healthy and sustainable. Um, but why, what's school meals in this picture? So when we zoom out and look at the bigger picture of the whole food system, uh, we quite quickly see that many, if not most, of the angles or entry points are connected to the school meal. The school meal can hence be seen as a small scale version of the food, whole food system. Uh, and it shares many of the challenges of the larger system, but it can be easier to identify obstacles and enablers for a sustainable food system in this smaller system. And we believe that the school food system can work as a lever for making the food, whole food system more sustainable. But this uh, requires uh, broad community-based efforts uh, where all actors with opportunity to influence development take responsibility and collaborate. And the school meal system, as you heard from the previous speakers from Sweden, is really, uh, the school meal system in Sweden gives great opportunities because it is, uh, an arena that connects people during their upbringing. It creates engagement and involves everyone. Uh, so you can try out new methods, techniques and cultures and norms here. Uh, and this kind of forum exists in every municipality and city in Sweden. So um, we can really have the opportunity to unlock major system changes in a sustainable food chain. Uh, next slide, please. And our mission is, that, is to ensure that every child in Sweden eats sustainable and tasty school food. 
Uh, and, um, but no change <coughs> is possible without collaboration. So the next slide, please. And as you heard, <coughs> we have uh, some challenges uh, and we are really kind of working in silos <laughs> in many sectors. Uh, but with this mission oriented work, we want to change that. So we, uh, in the first phase of the project, we collected uh, all actors from farm to fork, uh, and they helped out uh, in the process of mapping out the school food system, which is the system you can see here. And I know that you can't read what it says, uh, but I really want to show how complex uh, the system is. And also address that we can't really just work in one place of the system. We have to address several places at the same time. Because it's also so that if you make a small shift in one part of the system, it will or can produce big changes in everything. So we have to have this in mind when we start innovating and working. <clears throat> And in this picture, when we <clears throat> made this map, you can see the darker green boxes. These are <clears throat> areas where we see that if we make a change here, we think that it can have great impact uh, on the system. So the next slide, please. So these are the <clears throat> eight uh, areas that we found. And these are also the starting point for the work and innovation process in the project. Where we have, uh, we are seven uh, agencies working together and at the moment also four municipalities. And the four municipalities, they have during the last year, uh, tried to uh, find solutions to some of these areas. And we are now in the process, they have used design thinking methods, and we are now in the process of both uh, improving these uh, prototypes, but also distributing them in the system, uh, making sure that more schools and municipalities are taking the steps uh, to try new innovative ideas uh, to make a more sustainable school meal system. Uh, but they really, what should I say here? The, the, the opportunity we have here is that we have both, uh, we have actors, all actors in the system working to together to really kind of break down these silos and uh, using each other's competence and knowledge about the system to make sure that we really take steps further and accelerate the process uh, of uh, and the work uh, in reaching the sustainability goals. And we really want to hope uh, or show that we can, uh, that it is possible to use the school meals in order to support a healthy and sustainable future. And the next slide. So if you want to learn more, I could, uh, there is a film about the, the, the project uh, where you can learn more about some of the prototypes that has been done. Uh, there's also a mission oriented or a handbook uh, presented by Vinova, which is just uh, released. Uh, so you can learn more about uh, this method and you can also follow us in social media under the hashtag etnitrecept in Swedish. So thank you. Thank you so much, Ellen. And I uh, have shared uh, the, the film uh, through, the, through the chat, which is also another really great, um, uh, a great explanatory thing. And, and thank you so much for speaking about really this, this design uh, features of the next steps, because that's, well, once you have your uh, thoughts together, the, the next step is really, okay, how do you actually put it into practice? And having this process in place is so critical. And um, we really look uh, yeah, forward to, to, of course, continue learning also with uh, what you are doing. So um, next, uh, our next speaker will be is Moitza Gabrielcic, uh, who is also involved in uh, amazing initiatives of, of learning and doing. Um, so she's working at the National Institute of Public Health in Slovenia, 
but um, coordinates uh, also the joint action best remap, uh, which um, includes a public procurement, a big important public procurement angle. And Moita will be speaking more about what's coming out of that work. Thank you, Moita, for joining. Thank you, Nikolai, for the invitation. I'm really here speaking on behalf of the Best Remap Consortium, which represents 24 member states, uh, 22 from the EU and uh, two uh, assessing countries. And uh, this is a joint action on implementation of validated best practices on nutrition. We are happy that it's mentioned this joint action also in the EU beating cancer plan as one of the promising activities of the member states. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? Because it's speaking about uh, joint action itself. Um, as uh, Nikolai already said, it's coordinated at our institute. Um, it's funded by the Third Health Program, and uh, 36 partners are there, and a number, a quite bigger number, of the collaborating partners too. We started in October 2020, and we will be together till September next year with quite a substantial budget to implement three. Uh, core work packages, one going to reformulation and processed food monitoring led by French ANSES. The second one is on um, reducing marketing of unhealthy food products to children, uh, which is led by Director General of Health of Portugal and uh, Ireland, Department of Health there, and the public procurement of food in public institutions, which is the EU pilot approach uh, coordinated by Slovenia. And I have to say that all those three practices have been chosen in a really wide process um, and broad process among member states. So we have been um, um, collecting good practices, then voting for good practices, presenting it to each other. And at the end, we understood that that's what we want to do together. And the work package seven public procurement it was strongly supported by the Maltese presidency in 2017, when Mal Malta has um, put uh, public procurements really high on the policy agenda and uh, with the council conclusions, they have somehow opened the door for this good practice to be shared among member states. And uh, the GRC uh, um, European Directorate has uh, also helped a lot in that process. Next one, please. Uh, the work package seven itself, try to test and pilot the procurement best practice um, and somehow support the access to high quality, healthy and nutritious food, but also sustainability we are discussing, <laughs> discussing quite a lot among member states. Um, we have in fact two folds of testing the good practices. One is the establishment of the intersectoral working group as we did it in Slovenia. Uh, secondly, we would like to increase the understanding, knowledge and skills in this intersector group, but also in general. And the second big thing think which we are piloting is the catalog of foods um, in the public procurement procedure. And I will talk about both a bit later. Uh, but what is also important is that we would like to uh, recommend further institutionalized implementation of uh, practices which will be explored and tested in the member states to the European Commission, and we will do that by um, autumn next year, I think in the perfect timing for the needs of the processes at the Commission level. Um, so I would like to ask for the next slide, please. Uh, that's what we are doing in Slovenia and what we wanted to share with the others, because we have the National Food, Nutrition and Physical Activities uh, Strategy. The first one was already from 2005-2010, and we have the next one from 2016-25. And the um, Ministry of Health is leading the intersectoral working group, and we have a lot of chapters in this uh, strategy, and one of them is also linked to public procurements. And uh, I think that... Crossing the silos is, is one of the uh, important and successful stories here because Ministry of Public Administration, in fact, has the portfolio and is uh, transposing the legislation from the EU level. And the number of ministries are joining and have their interest in this um, joint activity regarding uh, public food procurements. So it's not just Ministry of Health, but also social affairs, environment, education, science, sport, development, technology, agricultural for, of course, also Ministry of Foreign Affairs, they also have uh, some of the um, uh, procurements uh, uh, they are using at the national level and Court of Audit. 
but also who is engaged is the Chamber of Commerce and Industries and Chamber of Agriculture and Forestry. And they have regular meetings. They are developing the approaches together. So Slovenia was also, I think, and it is at the moment still the only country which has implemented the exemption of 20% of the procured um, foods at the annual level in the present existing EU legislation, because so many ministries were working together finding the solutions. Next one. Um, and uh, as you can see from October last year till February this year, we have already implemented this uh, good practice in seven participating member states uh, like Austria, Poland, Greece, Hungary, um, I'm forgetting, sorry for that, but the others, uh, they are on the web page. And as you can see, uh, the, all of seven member states have included different sectors, quite a number of them. Um, some were even to go broader with few more, not just health, education, environment, agriculture, social affairs, uh, regional government, procurement authorities and private sector, but also economic and universities, NGOs, representatives of different other solutions. What they found is most beneficial is they have uh, been rising awareness among all these different stakeholders because they have been organizing the joint meetings of these different sectors. Um, the participants became interesting, interested in being a part of that and meetings helped to bring stakeholders together to understand those challenges and to establish joint cooperation. And it was really challenging work because at the beginning in some countries, they really, really didn't know what to do. It is so... Um, um, interesting to see uh, that public health doesn't reach out to the sectors which are really important for public procurement at the national level. So sharing that in a group of countries, it was much easier than to do. Um, and uh, finding the right people and lack interest is uh, also something what um, envisaging the possibilities for improving the quality of menus and challenges in involving local producers. That's something. Next one, please. Uh, so the second thing which we are uh, piloting right now is the catalog of foods is the automized tool which a part you have been already discussing about, which is allowing for data collection because the branded food data are in the database because market analysis is done, then the products are categorized and the automized tool is allowing for implementing the public procurement procedure by the food groups and then the procurement document is the outcome of that and the data could be potentially linked to many other systems in the country including health that means the menu so you can add the branded food directly to the menu when you buy the food in schools so a lot to be discussed about that uh, and we can present afterwards Thank you so much. What I would just like to say at the end is that uh, what we have noticed till now that we are very diverse and that uh, the implementation of the same legislation in different member states is, is really um, differs a lot. So we are trying to align that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Moitza, and for, for the amazing and, and, and really work, work you're doing. And I, well, referring to the tool, I mean, I, I just wonder Indeed, to, to, to what extent this can be evolved into this type of um, uh, tool that was actually discussed and everyone agreed on that, that was so necessary in the previous session. So this is really mm -hmm. important that you, are, you, you seem to be kind of going that way uh, already. Uh, but this hopefully maybe a bit more about this later on. And now I'm really happy um, to present our next speaker, Wim de Beukelare, who is a policy officer at the European Commission, um, DJ Sante. Um, and in, he is in the very much strategic uh, farm to fork unit, which will actually be leading on the new uh, proposal for the sustainable food systems legislative framework of which uh, public procurement is going to be an important part. But this, of course, Wim, Wim will be explaining more about. Thank you, Wim. Hey, thank you, Nikolai, and thank you. Um, let's maybe, yes, thank you. So yes, uh, Nikolai, thank you. And uh, thank you also for your opportunity to explain our initiative on public pro procurement, which will be uh, one of the building blocks uh, in our proposal for a framework legislation for a, a union sustainable food system. Uh, can I have the next slide, please? So in 2020, the European Commission adopted a comprehensive form to fork strategy and the goal uh, is to create a fair and healthy 
an environmental friendly EU food system. It should build on a sustainable food value chain, ensuring sustainable food production, stimulate uh, sustainable food processing, wholesale, retail, uh, hospitality and food service practices, promote sustainable consumption and facilitate a shift to healthy and sustainable diets, produce, uh, reduce food loss and food waste and ensure food security and combat food frauds. Uh, in order to enable the transition, we would foster research and innovation and also create advisory services, collect data and provide skills. It's also the aim to promote uh, a global transition uh, and a coherent global uh, food uh, EU food policy. Can I have the next slide, please? So uh, the Form to Fork strategy announced uh, 20, in the Form to Fork strategy, which you can find, by the way, online, uh, there is in the annex, there are 27 uh, actions uh, that have been announced. One of them is a proposal for a legislative framework for sustainable food systems. Other things are related to the revision of existing legislation such as food information so to consumers so labeling uh, legislation also revision of plant protection product legislation animal welfare feed additive and also as regards the non-legislative uh, initiatives uh, what is can or what is important is also the code of conduct for responsible business and marketing conduct in the food su supply chain for which already more than 100 companies have, um, or to which more than 100 companies already participate. There's no dedicated EU framework on food sustainability that is similar to the framework uh, which is currently exists, the general food uh, law, which the general food law is in fact related to food safety, and it has done its work. Unfortunately, it is less adequate to address new challenges like food sustainability. So the objective of our intervention will be to ensure that all food placed on the EU market increasingly will become sustainable through social responsible through a socially responsible food value chain. This will include an enabling environment for future policy and legislation, ensuring coherence with all EU food related policies in terms of sustainability objectives, including biodiversity and climate uh, uh, objectives. A favorable and transparent food environment will also be created, making it easier to choose healthy and sustainable uh, diets. Uh, at the intervention will also um, aim at optimizing production, distribution and consumption of food so as to increase resource efficiency and reduce food loss. Uh, so what we will do is on the one hand, we will set minimum requirements and push out things that are not sustainable. And on the other hand, we will pull uh, or we will introduce pool measures which will uh, promote uh, more sustainable uh, food production systems or more sustainable food. And one of these pool measures is indeed the setting of uh, minimum mandatory criteria for public uh, procurement of food in schools and public institutions. So this will be one of our uh, building blocks. So we have, in fact, for this initiative already made an inception impact assessment and, uh, and that was made public. Uh, and we received, in fact, it was made public with uh, the aim to receive feedback from interested uh, parties. Uh, so we received quite a lot of uh, contribution for the member states. It was very important uh, for them, it is very important that we um, do the necessary uh, impact assessment before we progress with this so that we look at the impact of all the measures that we intend to propose. Business operators, they would mainly uh, prefer voluntary measures and only where needed to have a reinforced legislation. However, NGOs and environmental and consumer organizations, and with these NGOs also EFA, and they support the option for an, a comprehensive framework legislation on sustainability of uh, the uh, union food system. And they emphasize, among others, the importance of laboring and the role of sustainable public procurement. So uh, about the uh, role of uh, the commission, uh, about the, uh, the importance of public procurement, the commission already uh, made communications about that. And in particular, in relation to the form to fork strategy, the commission uh, communicated that in order to improve the availability and the price of sustainable food and to promote healthy and sustainable diet in institutional caring, uh, 
the commission will determine the best way of setting minimum mandatory criteria uh, to to um, and to help. Uh, so we would set minimum mandatory criteria for sustainable food procurement, and that would then help uh, cities, regions, and public authorities to play their part by sourcing sustainable food for schools, hospitals, and public institutions. And it will also give a boost to sustainable farming systems such as uh, organic farming. Already in 2017, there was a communication uh, done by the Commission uh, referring to the renewed public procurement directives, and which it was said that um, the uh, strategic procurement uh, possibilities are not sufficiently used. In fact, the most advantageous tenders on the basis of a cost-effective approach, which may uh, include social, environmental, innovative, and accessibility, or, or other uh, qualitative criteria are still underused. So now we are at the slides that I wanted, <laughs> uh, that I'm now presenting. So in fact, there exist already commission staff working documents on uh, public procurement, and uh, the, maybe the most practical one is uh, the public is the the uh, commission staff working document on green public procurement criteria. It contains practical specifications and award criteria ready for use by food procurers in order to increase, for instance, the share of organic products to avoid consumption of fish and marine products from depleted stocks to promote increased offer in plant-based menus to avoid food waste, and etc. There is also the report on uh, public procurement for health, which provides a strong justification for action and aims at supporting member states to effectively translate national school food policies into healthy school food environments. In schools, it appears that a major obstacle is the translation of school food standards into adequate uh, procurement contract language. Also, the Commission has, uh, uh, in order to, prom to, to promote the use of public procurement as a tool to achieve social policy objectives, has also prepared practical guidance for uh, social procurement and for, um, for, for buying social. So next slide, Nikolai, if you're, uh, yes, thank you. So what are now the options for us or what can we do? A first option is do nothing, but that's not an option because it has already uh, come, uh, and it, in fact, it has been announced that we want to uh, improve public procurement. We want to make better use of public procurement. We have the guidelines which exist already, the green public procurement guidelines. However, they are not sufficiently taken up. Um, so there is also the, the, the guidelines which exist already for, for, a, public, for, for um, a healthy food procurement. Uh, these guidelines seem not to be sufficiently practical uh, for procurers. So in fact, do nothing is not an, an option. We can, of course, also uh, wait for voluntary approaches where then there would be a kind of an uh, engagement of the public sector, of, of, sorry, of the, the, the companies. Uh, to, to take as uh, the, 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 the food service providers to, to introduce sustainability in uh, the food that they provide. However, uh, we have already noticed that in the, for instance, the code of conduct, that is very little uptake for, uh, from the side of the food caterers. Also, many of them are SMEs and probably they do not have sufficient resources uh, to take all that into account or to take the initiatives by themselves. We can, of course, reinforce uh, existing legislation. Uh, and in fact, introduce mandatory uh, criteria or, or uh, award criteria or technical uh, criteria in the directive or another in the uh, current procurement directive. Or what we can do is in fact include uh, the setting up of minimum mandatory criteria in the framework legislation. And we could do that by uh, setting general principles in uh, the legislation, uh, but for instance, by uh, uh, the requiring member states and to uh, set up um, a national focal, focus points and maybe uh, introduce uh, national action plans for sustainable uh, public procurement. Uh, we can establish an EU network of food procurement pro professionals, but we can also, via delegated acts, uh, set specified specific criteria 
as public procurement criteria for nutritional um, foods, uh, we can also require to set uh, composition databases and things like that. And we could also, if needed, indeed set minimum mandatory criteria with timelines uh, that then would have to be implemented by the member states. Can I have the next slide, please? Um, so I have maybe this is a bit my personal comments that uh, and that is based on on quite recent uh, publications, for instance, in Belgium, that not all schools or no, not all children enjoy the meals offered in schools. For instance, there was recently um, a publication in, in, the, in the news about the school, the, the sandwich boxes and that in fact what the children take uh, to school and eat in school uh, in their sandwich boxes, which was really awful to see pieces of pizzas, hamburgers, pastas, really, uh, I say, not nutritious food. Also, what was recently uh, explained by the Belgian Public Health uh, Institute, Sciensano, that it seems that around the schools, more the more um, uh, fast food restaurants there are around schools, the more obesity, there is a direct link. Yeah? Uh, then maybe what is also important, and I think that's something that could be done, is that there is a need for a permanent education, and I think that could be maybe part of the public procurement where you would require food service providers also to contribute uh, or to, to, to require from them some educational uh, requirements. And then maybe also very important is that uh, of course, the Commission, we can help, we will do certain things, we will take efforts, uh, we will take steps, but of course, uh, there is an important role for the local, the regional and the national authorities. Um, and then maybe my final slides, just to explain what are the next steps in uh, our uh, um, for the establishment of our framework is that we will organize an open public consultation where there will be questions also related to public procurement and the idea is to have our framework legislation ready by end of next year uh, so here i've listed all the other initiatives which relate to the consultations which will happen during this year so thank you very much for your attention thank you so much for for these insights on, on what's going on uh, at your end of the commission now um, we will hear what um, is going on uh, at another end of the commission and um, i'm really glad to invite marie cecile rouillon who is the uh, european commission coordinator on the rights of the child and uh, those who have followed the event throughout have uh, heard how much emphasis is, was being put on the um, child guarantee. And so we are really uh, looking forward to hear more about this. Marisa Sid. Thank you very much, Nikolai, and uh, for this invitation to join the panel. Uh, first, indeed, it's uh, it's really good also to see the the, the exchange, and exchange of best practices in member states at local level, and also uh, thanks to to Vim from the DG Agri of the presentation of uh, of some EU tools and the strategic procurement possibilities. So on my side. Um, I am the, 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 I've been just appointed as the at the Commission's coordinator for the rights of the child. So that means that uh, one of the main tasks is to implement what we have put in place. That's, that's the EU strategy on the rights of the child. I will not go into all details of this. It's not uh, really the purpose of today's discussion. Uh, what I would uh, flag uh, is that the strategy uh, is also closely connected to the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, and notably uh, that has references to nutrition, to healthy food in Articles uh, 24 and 27. So to make it clear, all member states have ratified this UN Convention, and then the strategy at EU level is really to make it life, I would say. For this, um, there are indeed, I mean, various tools. First, let me give you, I mean, uh, just a few figures that are extremely telling, unfortunately, um, and also pointed at, pointing at the importance of considering the food dimension in a really broad, much broader context. Also, of course, linked to the socio-economical context. And uh, for instance, uh, in uh, across almost all member states. Uh, on average, 20% of children reported that they did not eat breakfast before going to school. 
uh, and uh, those children were more likely to come with uh, families with a low, lower socioeconomic background. Um, of course, uh, some members, so member states are the one re, won the lead and have the competence for that of putting in place some school food policies. And thanks a lot for all uh, brilliant presentations of uh, what is has been done as best practices. Mm -hmm. Uh, they could be voluntary guidelines, mandatory, um, and they could also serve in the school setting. And in the COVID context of COVID, uh, again, it demonstrated the importance of, uh, of such uh, school meals for children, especially at risk of poverty, uh, because uh, the countries where there were such school meals, that was really an importance of, uh, of source of food for the disadvantaged group, so children, uh, when the, the schools were open again. All of this to put a bit the, the, the context uh, that is really to embed the, the meals and the food nutrition within the rights of the children and also part of a bigger uh, context. That's why, um, I mean, closely linked to the strategy, there is a more concrete also initiative uh, that is the, chi the child guarantee. Uh, and so indeed, uh, so there were several references. Uh, uh, we're not going into all details, but basically member states are recommended to guarantee for children in need at least one healthy meal each school day, as well as effective access to healthy nutrition. Um, so maybe we could come back to, to this as regards uh, what could be attached as well in terms of uh, funding supports, um, but what I would say that it's also in the hands of the member states uh, to also uh, include uh, this dimension in the national program, so for the implementation of the child guarantee that they presented uh, so by, by the 15th of March, so this is currently being assessed. So we have not all data of uh, the number of member states that really did include uh, some specific provisions and, and highlight, highlight on this. Uh, what I would say, um, so is that, uh, so the member states should also allocate appropriate resources to, to fighting child poverties, poverty and notably for, for those member states with the risk of poverty rate that is above the EU average. Uh, and that's a part of the European Social Fund uh, national envelope. So they should uh, appropriate an amount that is at least of 5% of, uh, of uh, this uh, European um, Social Fund and envelope. Uh, so that means that in the uh, the implementation of the European Child Guarantee, there could be provisions on healthy schools meals uh, that will obviously qualify that as of fighting child poverty. So basically, for those countries where there, there is a higher risk of poverty, uh, within what they should allocate to fight this, so uh, they, 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 they could also uh, include a point on child, fighting child poverty and thus also provisions on healthy food. But it's also clear that the EU funds will not be enough to implement fully the European Child Guarantee. And uh, so the member states are also invited to, uh, alloc to indicate in the action plans uh, what financial resources would be also needed and secured also on their side. So voila. Uh, so just as regard the child, uh, the child guarantee. I don't know. Maybe we, if we, you have some specific questions of if you want that already. Uh, so uh, refer to the UN scheme for school fruit, vegetable, and meals under the farm to fork strategy. I mean, Nikolai, um, depending on what you prefer. <laughs> Thank you, Marie, Marie Cecile, for the, 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 this overview and, and, and really for joining, uh, especially also since you actually just took on this this role uh, last last week. So that, that that's really amazing uh, for, for, for for you to be here. And uh, well, I, I'm sure we will be. Uh, well, I hope we will be much more in touch on this critical theme, uh, also from not only from the point of view of public procurement, but uh, from many other sides. I. 
Maybe, maybe if we can reserve um, the, the further potential discussion or questions and, and do please check also the Q and mm -hmm. A uh, function if there's anything specific. And I would just then want to uh, give uh, the floor to uh, Holly Rippin from the World Health Organization. So um, who would do um, a, a kind of an, an overview of the um, um, <clears throat> of the guidelines that the WHO has created for uh, public procurers. So instead of Claire Ferrand, who again, as uh, I mentioned before, um, had, was um, just got ill before before the start, unfortunately. So Holly, Holly, welcome, and we will put on the slides. Thank you. Thank you, Nikolai. So um, hello, hello, colleagues and everybody. And um, yeah, apologies that I'm not Claire Farrand. Um, Nicola explained that she was off sick. And thank you um, ever so much to the panelists for being willing to shift things around so that I could speak on her behalf. Um, as Nicola said, um, I should yeah, introduce myself. Sorry, I'm, I'm Holly Rippin. I'm a public health nutritionist and I'm a consultant for the WHO NCD office. Um, I'm working remotely out of the UK at the moment. So I'm going to talk about um, um, the manual for public procurement officers in the WHO European region and a bit about where that's come from. So next slide, please. So just to start off with, um, we know that nutrition is essential for the success of all, all the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, goals number two and three are often thought of as the, the main ones for, for nutrition, but actually optimum nutrition is essential for achieving several and if not all, all of the SDGs. Um, so, yeah, we need a multi-sectoral nutrition security approach um, to enable us to be successful in achieving all of them. So next slide, please. So um, the NCD office is um, engaged in a number of work streams um, to promote healthy and sustainable food. And these range from looking at plant-based diets um, systematic reviews and um, product analysis of that. Um, a reformulation manual for salt um, and then other nutrients, um, looking at digital food environments such as meal delivery apps, um, and also systems thinking. Um, but the thing that we're talking about today is public food procurement, and we're developing a manual um, to inform this. So next slide, please. So why public procurement then? So public institutions, um, we believe, should lead by example and influence behaviour change. It's, it's quite a low hanging fruit. Um, if if, if um, we can reach uh, public institutions, then, then that's quite a broad reach. And it's an important policy lever to enable behaviour change to filter down into um, consumers and also to inspire industry as well. So we're developing a manual for public procurement officers. Um, it's developed in conjunction with um, public procurement officers, so it will be directly relevant. Um, and it will encompass um, the whole public procurement process. So it'll be very, very comprehensive. It'll be um, technically informative. Um, and it'll be basically a one-stop shop for um, officers across the region to be able to tailor their um, procurement practices to enable um, healthy and sustainable diets to be promoted. So next slide, please. So just to say, um, I won't go through the whole slide into interest of time, but healthy public food procurement and service policy encompasses all of these different elements. So the, all of these different words are incorporated into the manual. So the healthy side, um, looking at the nutrient um, aspects of so limiting free sugars, limiting sodium consumption, exam for example, encouraging um, the use of whole grains, vegetables, fruits, nuts and pulses. Um, obviously, public um, is with government funds in any public setting. Um, it covers food and beverages, um, ingredients, meals and snacks. Um, and then obviously procurement and service, it covers the whole process. And then it can inform policies, strategies um, and, and even legislation. So this, this applies to mandatory as well as voluntary um, in initiatives and interventions. So next slide, please. So the example that we've used to um, inform some of the manual is the city of, of Copenhagen. So here, almost 90% of the food served in public institutions is organic. Um, and this is linked in with the increasing popula um, popularity of plant-based food. 
And this, this was came about by in 2019 with the launch of a, of a new food strategy. And with this new food strategy, um, with target setting, it's ensuring that healthy and sustainable meals are applied to more than 70,000 daily um, settings. And it's actually set a target to reduce CO2 emissions um, by 25% to 2025. So these are, these are the, um, the kind of inspirations that the manual is based on and the kind of things that will be helping the public procurement offices to achieve. Next slide, please. So schools are obviously a major um, public setting where procurement is, is key. Um, and this manual is for all of the 53 member states for the WHO European region. Um, so um, we've been looking at um, food procurement in policies in schools in um, Eastern Europe and Central Asia, specifically Ukraine, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan. Um, and we've collaborated um, with national stakeholders and we've put together three technical workshops on healthy public food procurement and policy um, to be able to build capacity and build on the knowledge um, of the existing WHO framework, bring in a behavioural or cultural insights perspective and use this to um, plan next steps which are applicable to the national setting and have real impact on consumer um, and, and, and behavior. So from this, there'll be development of key messages in a communication campaign. And like I said, informed by behavioral cultural insights um, to pilot test and then promote school nutrition. Next slide, please. So I will just finish up by saying that um, each, each um, sort of initiative and each manual, like the public procurement manual, it doesn't exist in a bubble. Um, it needs to be part of a, of a wider package to support healthy and sustainable diets. And this is just to show that it's not an isolated thing. So we have the public food procurement manual, um, which will be launched very soon. Um, we also have um, a fact sheet on all of our work streams that are um, looking at healthy and sustainable diets. That's on the website now. Um, we've got tools to help in um, salt reduction, um, digital marketing, and we also have reports um, and tools looking at um, complementary foods as well. So this is just to showcase a little bit more of the wider work um, of the NCD office. So um, the final slide, um, I'll just leave it there. And just to say thank you very much again um, for your time and for being accommodating. Um, if anybody has any questions, then I'll do my very best to answer them. Um, if not, I can take them back to my colleagues and, and, and we'll be in touch. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Holly, for, for jumping in uh, and for this really great uh, presentation. Really looking forward to the manual. It seems like, a, and it's, and it's um, yeah, I, I don't know, always, always nice to see a certain rounding. We started with um, um, with a kind of yeah talk about how public procurement is indeed part of a wider set of uh, actions, and we're ending in a way uh, in, in a in a similar uh, in a similar vein. So that that's really great. I see we we have just a very few minutes left for some questions. So if if maybe everyone can um, put on the and I see there's um, actually two. Uh, well, questions to to the to the European Commission, as um, you will uh, quite often find, and I would just like to, I, I guess, direct um, two questions to to Wim. One being uh, about the short supply chains, which received many likes. Uh, whether the Commission is planning any instruments to support short supply chains in public procurement, and secondly, on um, the public consultation, whether you already have a, a date or a timeline for that, uh, the one you mentioned. And um, to Marie-Cécile, um, a question about the, um, um, the National Child Guarantee Action Plan uh, plans, or whether, what kind of uh, criteria you will be using to assess them. So maybe Wim, if you would be able to go first. Well, uh, on your last question, the public consultation, if everything goes well, that will be in April, okay? Um, and then as regards the short supply chain, um, it should not be excluded. However, it would still have to be done within, uh, let's say the rules of the internal market. But as such, uh, a short supply chain should be possible within, uh, 
uh, the public procurement done by schools. And for that, of course, we are very happy to learn about the experiences that, for instance, uh, will come from our dear colleagues uh, who are working in with the best remap, uh, because they will come up with some recommendations. And one of the things, and indeed one of the questions we have received also during the inception impact assessment related to the short supply chain. Yeah. So we will look at that and see what is possible within the rules of the internal market. Thank you, uh, Wim, for the clear uh, answer. Marie Cecile, would you like to reflect on that last question? Thanks. Yes, sure. Thank you. Uh, so, indeed, as regards the, the European uh, Child Guarantee, uh, so indeed the the, um, the 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 national programs have action plan has just been received. Uh, so, for a lot of numbers of countries, so uh, so the deadline was by the fifteenth of March, and now I mean it's kind of a bit uh, of still confidential time of really assessing that and uh, and going to into it. I mean, at least we could not disclose those plans those days uh, still uh, but uh, I mean the criteria we of course will re re so linked with link with uh, what uh, is also in the council recommendation on the, on the, on the, 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 the right the, 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 the child guarantee so our colleagues from DG employment are on the lead on this so simply I could not also say more, more because uh, that's also under the uh, under the remits however I that indeed the for this, uh, and indeed looking at the situation in the countries. And the really important to keep in mind that this guarantee is really supporting uh, the children that are really the most in so in in the, in the most disadvantaged experiences. So the homeless children with disabilities, with mental health issues, with my migrant backgrounds, and I think it's also really important. To, those days of minority ethnic origin, particularly Roma. So, I mean, you could imagine uh, really also what could, how it could also be being uh, useful in the current uh, terrible context of children fleeing the war, um, children in alternative uh, in institutional care in a in precarious family situation. So uh, it's also for the member states to see what are their challenges, what is their national situation and where they could also uh, um, act uh, for the best. So, uh, of course, we really hope that uh, the, 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 the nutrition dimension uh, would also feature a prominent dimension there. But for the time being, I mean, uh, we, we have not uh, all clear picture on that. Just if you allow me, um, under the farm to fork strategy, if I may, just for one minute, I know that we are a bit late, just referring to the EU scheme for school fruits, vegetables, and milks, milk that uh, is basically aiming at uh, developing a healthy eating habits. Uh, so that's an initiative that is run by our colleagues from DG Agree. And uh, it's really for the supply of such products. So not only under uh, school meals, but it could also include uh, and also developing uh, good educational activities. So for, for the children in terms of nutrition. Uh, so there is a budget of 250 million per school year for the period 2017-23. And uh, good to know that the commission will review this, uh, this school scheme, as, as uh, the, the school scheme itself. Uh, and that was really uh, building on the, les the lesson learned st since the implementation for the since 2017. Um, and uh, notably that an open public con consultation will be launched in the coming days for 12 days. So 12 weeks, sorry. <laughs> so it's also good to see that within the farm to fork strategy and the EU scheme for, for, for school fruits, vegetable and milk, there might also be some uh, opportunities for really gathering views of the stakeholders uh, and uh, in, that, uh, in that consultation process uh, as the review exercises due, exercises due by, um, by 2023. So you see, uh, there are some really concrete initiatives, and uh, so the child guarantee, the use scheme for for school fruits, vegetable, and milk, and uh, we really hope that it might also make a change. Also knowing that, of course, member states are also on the lead and should also uh, take good use of those opportunities and also put uh, enough, um, I would say, uh, additional funding as relevant and uh, as uh, as as possible. Thank you.
Thank you so much, so much, Marie Cecile. And that's a really good point indeed for adding um, well this mention of the school uh, scheme. So we are very a little bit over time, but I, I just want to take maybe two two minutes for Moitza uh, and Holly to to react on anything uh, that you've heard, and then we will have to uh, pack up, unfortunately. So please. No, I'm just uh, very happy uh, that we were able to participate. It was a lot of learning uh, points uh, also for the project and we uh, even understand better what to deliver at the end as the recommendations from the member states. So um, I think that if anyone would like to learn more about what we are doing, we are at the website or we are still open for the collaborating if anybody is so interested. So thank you so much for the invitation. Thank you, Moitza. Uh, Holly, please. Yeah, no, um, not, nothing, nothing major for me. Just to say, um, it's it is really interesting to know um, what's going on in in this space, and there's a lot of good work going on. Um, obviously, um, WHO are really keen to support member states. So, like um, Marika said, if if there's anything people want to reach out, then please do. And and yeah, thank you for inviting us to be part of this um, this this event. So th th thank you so much. Thank you so much to everyone. Um, uh, we are slightly a few minutes over time, but I think that 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 that, that is really fine because it was such a rich uh, rich debate. Um, I hope uh, that you have found it as valuable and enriching as uh, as we did as organizers. Uh, and really, an, an immense thanks to all speakers who have shared so much knowledge, goodwill, expertise with us today. And um, I really feel, yeah, we need to put our shoulders behind uh, this to move uh, towards sustainable, healthy food systems in which public procurement obviously has an important uh, role, a very important role, because it's both doable, what we have seen, and it is really the right thing to do, which is also what we've heard. So thank you uh, so very much. And I very really look to uh, stay in touch uh, with you all. And after the event, you will always, uh, of course, receive a follow-up um, email, uh, including with some of the highlights, uh, some of the materials shared today. And later on, we will uh, be reaching out on, um, uh, on the event report and, and recording. So thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the day.